So just in case you're not already on board, here is a friendly but psychopathic pigeon. Do encourage you to subscribe to the Grand Line Review for regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. And then after you've hit that button, then you can enjoy this channel's videos just as much as Hartree enjoys watching the world burn. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece and more specifically welcome to yet another One Piece battle where we take two characters from this fast, fast series and put them together in a hypothetical matchup and do our best to determine a winner as objectively as possible by examining and awarding points for the following criteria. Power, speed, durability, haki, individual fighting styles, devil fruits, intelligence, and other miscellaneous notes. And today we have another battle of ex-villains of the series with one of the world government's finest agents, Rob Lucci, a former member of the super secretive CP9 cell and current member of the somehow less secretive yet more influential CP0 cell, which operates under the direct control of the world government. And stepping into this battle, Rob Lucci comes equipped with a scary carnivorous soul and type devil fruit, as well as a full set of Rokushiki techniques, including one super special secret one, the combination of which makes Lucci a perfect superhuman assassin. And going up against him, we have a true classic villain of the series in Sir Crocodile, the former warlord of the sea, who despite being defeated fairly early on in the grand scheme of things, is certainly not to be underestimated because he has earned the respect and notoriety of many profound figures, and also he comes into this with a very deadly Logia type devil fruit at his disposal. But with that out of the way, let us commence the battle. Kicking this match off is the ever standard power category, and you know Crocodile is a bit more of a physical beast than I think he ever gets credit for, being comfortable with lifting and disposing of the corpses of an entire pirate crew, as well as tanking many, many hits from Luffy. But let's be real, this particular area is not quite his forte. And really, by all available evidence, Lucci completely dominates in this field due to his assassin training as a child, and even through his half a decade experience working as a shipwright for Galila in an incredibly physically demanding profession, thus training his body each and every day. And this is before we consider the incredible power boost given to him by his devil fruit, which amps up his strength to the point where he can just casually toss various straw hat members around like they were nothing, and all of this is pre-time skip, although we don't have a great measure of his post-time skip abilities in general, to be fair. In any case though, Crocodile simply has not demonstrated physical prowess, great than that of simply lifting a human body, so the opening act of raw physical power does need to be awarded to Mr. Rob Lucci. Next up, we are going straight into Devil Fruits because this will go on to inform most other categories, and what we have here is a very rare matchup of a Zoan and a Logia Fruit. Now, typically, I would say the advantage here always has to be given to the Logia user because of their innate power of intangibility, as well as more general utility in regards to being able to conjure, manipulate, and even become their element. And the sheer dominance of this matchup has been shown in the series when Crocodile swiftly disposed of Chaka, however, However, the opposite has also been displayed, whereby Pecoms, a Zoan user, was able to one-shot Karabo, the user of a Swamp Logia. So it is exceptionally dependent on how the wielders make use of their abilities. However, on a very basic level, a Logia will always provide more potential than a Zoan that is not a mythical type. So Luchi's Neko Neko no Mi model Leopard is fantastic in regards to enhancing his pure physicality in every aspect, but the Suno Suno no Mi just does so much more than that. Allowing Crocodile to attack Luchi with deadly blades, shockwaves, a variety of masking techniques like sandstorms, and access to incredible defensive maneuvers, inaccessible by non-Logia users, and even the ability to fly. So if we're talking about Devil Fruits alone, the power to become an entire desert does tend to trump that of turning into a big old kitty cat. So Crocodile does win in this pure category, but that is not to say that Luchi cannot make up for that elsewhere. And one of those areas would be durability. So Crocodile to me very much fits the definition of a glass cannon, which is very appropriate actually, because sand would be the main ingredient in glass production. I mean, I guess his durability and or endurance are not to be underestimated, because he did tank a wide array of attacks from a very early incarnation of Luffy, but at the same time, each and every one of those attacks did hit him incredibly hard. Meanwhile, Rob Lucci was able to comfortably fight Luffy, equipped with gears, into something of a stalemate, whereby Luffy only barely prevailed. In his base form though, Luffy's attacks were effectively powerless against Luchi, and a large part of that is due to the Rokushiki technique known as Tekkai, or Iron Body, and access to this absurd defense pretty much ends the conversation right here. But I want to stress that even without Tekkai, Crocodile would most certainly still lose in this category. At any given time, he is only really a handful of good hits away from being taken out of a fight, as shown during Marineford, where he briefly, very briefly, combated Diamond Jozu, and one brilliant punk later, Crocodile was on the verge of giving up, and was very lucky actually being saved by Dolphamingo, who took control of the Whitebeard Commander. 
Panda. So look, I'm sorry, Sir Crocodile, but this is one area where you stand almost certainly no chance. And that's only going to get much worse here because we have another complete wipe category coming up being Haki. Now, rather interestingly, neither of our contestants here have displayed Haki during their tenure as primary antagonists. And in retrospect, this is very strange because of their status in the world, especially Luchi because Haki is very common knowledge amongst high level world government officials, but also especially Crocodile because he was one of the seven warlords of the sea. And that is a position that he never should have reached without taking command of any type of Haki. These are of course, the result of a long running story where Haki, you know, may or may not have actually intended to be involved in things in general. But to decide this category, we do need to examine what has happened since. And that strongly favors Rob Lucci as after the time skip, he has now been dubbed as a confirmed user of both armament and observation Haki. And one example of this can be seen in film gold where he briefly faces off against Sabo. However, that is definitely not canon. But what is canon is the information that comes from the One Piece Vivia card. So this is very important because without armament Haki, Lucci would have had a really rough time against Crocodile's low gear powers and would have had to discover his natural weakness to deal with him, which no Lucci probably would have, but it would have taken time. Unfortunately for Crocodile on the other hand, he has had no such Haki confirmation. His Vivia card failed to reveal his Haki status, which is not to say that he doesn't possess it because Crocodile's Vivia card quite notably features his pre time skip incarnation whilst Lucci's focuses on his post time skip form. But with everything we have available to us right now, all we could do is pointlessly speculate over whether or not Crocodile does know Haki. And in my opinion, he most certainly probably does. But that's not quite good enough for this battle. And so Lucci takes this section, no problem whatsoever. Time for some intelligence now. And this is a very cool category because we are dealing with a couple of prime schemers and tacticians here. Rob Lucci is obviously an intellectual beast because it's his job to do so, being a master of intel and having to apply his skills in a very precise manner as an assassin, which even transfers into situations like going into a full on brawl like he did against Luffy. And so as a result of his tactical prowess, Lucci is able to effectively min max his physical output and not end up wasting a ton of unnecessary energy. Very, very important. However, he is up against Crocodile, which is I would say unfortunate because in this case, Lucci happens to be dealing with one of the greatest masterminds ever conjured in One Piece. I would equate Crocodile to a form of grandmaster chess player when it comes to implementing schemes because this is a man who has backups for the backups of his backups. And the only reason why he was defeated on Alabaster was due to the absurd level of fate presented within Luffy. Any other rookie in Luffy's position would have succumbed to Crocodile's near perfect planning on the island. And this does very much translate into a combat sense as well because Crocodile has a supreme awareness of his abilities. And just as with Lucci, he understands how to maximize damage and minimize energy spent causing it, which could be very, very easy given that his low gear powers can do most of the strenuous work for him. And Crocodile has on multiple occasions shown that he can make incredibly quick and accurate deductions based on extremely minimal information, making him a truly deadly show of precise force in combat. And that may not be so great for a battle royale setting like Marineford, but in a one-on-one -on -one scenario, Crocodile's analytical, tactical, and cunning prowess is in my opinion, superior to that of Lucci, which is insane because Lucci is not to be underestimated here either. But there you go. Back to something more physical and we get to examine speed now. And simply this is another Lucci win. In theory, Crocodile does possess fantastic speed, mostly due to being able to turn into sand and moving swiftly like that. However, Crocodile has been empirically demonstrated to be within the agility range of a pre gear, pre time skip, pre haki Luffy. Whereas Lucci has another funky Rokushiki technique known as Soru, which will outpace Crocodile any day of the week. And this is probably another one of those situations where modern day Crocodile would probably receive a retrospective speed boost because the evidence we have of him did not accurately represent what his level should have been in the world. But at the same time, that is sadly all we've got to go on. So we're gonna have to go with that. But the thing is, this doesn't even take into account Luchi's full beast form, which being a leopard is pretty damn fast. And no, it's not a cheetah, but it's still incredibly swift and able to very, very easily outmatch the pace of any human and probably low gear user. And who knows, maybe Luchi's leopard form can even use Soru, which makes this even more of a complete display of dominance here. So yeah, speed just is not one of those crocodile specialties. But let's see if his individual fighting style is. And here is where we do immediately need to cut to Luchi and focus a lot more on his Rokushiki mastery, which we have spoken a fair bit of already. But being able to perform these six techniques basically turn him into a superhuman. Collectively, they grant him super speed, super defense, incredible evasiveness, as well as potent and powerful attacks. The collection of these techniques make Luchi capable of fighting at great speeds against insurmountable power and effectively on any battleground. And Crocodile is in a surprisingly similar situation thanks to his low gear properties. The only features he's really truly missing is an amped up defense and a pure sense of speed. However, his evasiveness in particular is superior to that of Luchi due to the properties of the Suna Suna no Mi and the power granted to Crocodile more than rivals the Rankyaku and Shigan arsenal available to Luchi. Now it should be said that Luchi does possess
possess the secret Rokogan technique, which results in devastating damage, but it can only be used in a very, very specific scenario. And to be honest, its effectiveness against Crocodile would be questionable, because it does not appear to be an attack that can be infused with Haki, meaning that Crocodile would come out of it unfazed. The same goes for Rankyaku, although Shigun could most certainly be performed with a finger coated in Haki. But it's a bit hard to pick a winner based on style alone, because both Crocodile and Luchi have very precise and advanced tactical battle preferences, with an incredible slew of options available to fit almost any scenario possible. Not only that, but they are both very capable of either defending or evading attacks that the other could muster, so I will need to declare a tie for this category here. Some other miscellaneous things to consider, starting with Mr. Crocodile, because as much as I've praised his intelligence and his mastery of double fruit usage, the one problematic factor is his arrogance, which has unfortunately resulted from his admittedly brilliant intellect. Crocodile's depth of layered planning can make him incredibly reckless during the early stages of said plans, such as on the two occasions he had to kill Monkey D. Luffy, but he rather just foolishly assumed that the Straw Hat Captain would die. And by the time Luffy had broken through to Crocodile's final stage, through sheer fate or luck, whatever, it doesn't really matter, Crocodile was finally overcome. And all of that was preventable, but he chose to make arrogant assumptions, which is a big, big problem in battle. Lucci, on the other hand, has far less of an issue in that regard. However, due to his carnivorous Owen fruit, he is subject to an animalistic bloodlust. This means that Lucci can often lose his cool in battle and adopt the mentality of a beast, which in certain situations, yes, that could be fantastic. That bloodlust helped him considerably against Luffy, for example, because Luffy is an all-out brawler and those sorts of combat instincts would be well suited against him. However, engaging this mode against Crocodile opens Luchi up to exploitation because Crocodile's intellect may begin to deduce patterns in Luchi's predictable animalistic behavior and allow him to take control of that situation. But really, neither of those factors are enough to cancel out the ultimate result, which is a victory for the Cypherpole agent Rob Luchi, sitting at a massive five points, having won in the categories of power, durability, speed, hockey, and tying for individual fighting style. So this is very much a show of physical domination from Luchi, who was able to pick up many of those categories almost by default without contest. Meanwhile, Crocodile has more cerebral showing, winning Devil Fruit, Intelligence, and tying for fighting style, giving him a total of a sad three points. So yes, this really is a situation of raw power winning the day. If Crocodile was a confirmed Haki user or was able to amp himself up to any decent level of physicality, then I would honestly say that this conflict would probably go in his favor. But he isn't, and that's what we're dealing with. So in this case, I need to offer my congratulations to Mr. Rob Lucci for a marvelous showing here today. Enjoy your victory, my good leopard man. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.